Ms. Danusha Pathirana. So I'm here today on behalf of the uh, uh, Janaragala Sandhanaya. So as we know, so as we know, the the ultra corrupt Ranil Rajapaksa regime is at the moment peddling this uh, ultra neoliberal IMF program. So what is happening as a result? So we see that the entire scheme of resources in the country is being squeezed out. The lifeblood of the public is being squeezed out to entertain the owners of the, cor the corrupt owners of the domestic debt. I would like to highlight this fact, not just the foreign debt, the owners of the foreign uh, domestic debt as well as the foreign debt. Now, as a result, we see a tremendous collapse of the living conditions of the public, which our earlier comrades highlighted. By 25% of our population has been thrown into poverty, and uh, close to 20% of the population is thrown into darkness, which the energy minister is himself is highlighting as if he has made a, 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 a tremendous achievement. And the nutrition level, also the health ministry highlights that around 48% of the children under five is suffering from some form of malnourishment and the access to energy and everything is now beyond the general masses of this country. So we have suffered all these consequences just to entertain primarily these holders of Sri Lanka's foreign and domestic debt. Now in uh, IMF's, in this context, the IMF's current review, while highlighting, now it is highlighting that the, the this, the reason, the prime or the root cause of this, uh, this tremendous collapse lies with the declining of the tax income. So while highlighting this, what has it proposed? It is, it is disgracefully proposing that the foreign, uh, the, the profits repatriated by the foreign capital and the incomes repatriated by the foreigners who are actually working here, right? All that should be exempted from tax clearance from 14% tax on the repatriation and also the earnings through current transactions, all these three accounts should be uh, completely exempted from taxation. This is what is, uh, what is demanding from the government and, the, and this damn government is, is, uh, has agreed to this in the same report. So while they are highlighting the fact that the collapse is due to the declining of the tax revenue, which is also a result of their own policies made during Chandrika Kumaratunga's uh, a, a wave of uh, uh, liberalization in the mid 90s where the tax revenue started collapsing from uh, 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 something about 23% of the uh, GDP. Now it is uh, close to, uh, collapsed to about 8%. Uh, so now uh, after highlighting all that, it is demanding the government to exempt the foreign capital. Uh, earnings by the foreign capital multinationals uh, which uh, uh, amass through activities in uh, within the country. And not stopping from there, it has nothing to say, absolutely nothing to say about the tax concessions or tax exemptions given to the domestic and multinational firms, which has amounted to six, over 60% of the revenue between 2022 and 2023, according to the own this, uh, this government's publications, which came out on March 31st. 60% of the government revenue uh, has been exempted. Uh, due to these tax concessions, which amounts to about 978 billion. Now, the, on, uh, the, the proposed economic commission bill is proposing to extend these tax exemptions. So, within this context, context only, the IMF has come and approved the ongoing economic program of this neoliberal government. So, we, uh, the public should be very well aware uh, who, to whose interest is uh, these IMF policies are designed. So, now, uh, let me move on to the, wh what they're proposing for foreign debt. Now, what I think everyone knows in this country that the IMF is saying that if the country can reach 95% of debt ratio by 2032, it, is, it will be fairly debt uh, sustainable. Now, this is a, a disgraceful distortion of the accepted norms, uh, fundamentally published by uh, institutions like the UN, which clearly states that Countries like us in the third world without a uh, hard currency or without a convertible currency traded in international markets must have a debt ratio below 50%. And its uh, uh, interest expenses should be uh, ideally below 25% of its revenue. 
So whereas our current debt ratio is well above 130 percent with 100 billion debt, uh, we have reached that uh, milestone, I should say. So now in this context, IMF is saying if you reach 95 percent, you are fine. What it has done is now it has completely taken away the logical justification of countries like us to go and demand a higher haircut or higher uh, uh, reduction of uh, foreign debt by these predatory holders of uh, debt of the, the third world. So, um, um, and to uh, to add salt to this, the Sri Lankan representatives of this, the Sajaba and the Harsha de Silvas, is welcoming this devil with uh, both hands. It it is it is it wants to approve this program uh, as soon as possible. That's what uh, that's what we see uh, coming from them. So. Um, so since we are running out of time, I will give a, a small uh, also summary in Singhala.